Hi everyone, so welcome to my channel and thank you to everyone that has subscribed to my channel, I really appreciate it. And if you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Marianne Hanson, I'm a counsellor and a coach. I have two pages on here, um, channels, <laughs> my page which is Marianne Hanson Counsellor and Coach and I also have a second channel which is called Marianne Hanson Confidence Coach. And something I want to talk about is it's a bit topical and I also feel it's like something that I've not made lots of videos about and that is exploring cultural identity. So I think a few years ago I did make a video called Embracing Your Culture and that video was talking about the importance of loving who you are, the importance of embracing and accepting who you are and I think at this time in society, not just with the coronavirus and also what's going on around the world, Black Lives Matters and that sort of thing, Lots of people are starting to question and evaluate who they are, defining themselves, starting to have more conversations around culture and identity. So I just want to give you a little story of my own. And it's nothing about, we've all, every like non-white person in the world has probably had some sort of story where they've maybe faced discrimination or where it's been direct or indirect racism. And I don't really think for me on this channel, it's about, you know, just sharing lots of stories in that sense. But I do want to share this one because I think it's linked with what we're talking about, identity. So many years ago, I was applying for a DBS, which is called Disclosure and Barring Service. Anyone that works with children or works in certain areas where there's trust, um, you know, involved, you have to go through this process and you fill in the form and then it checks with the police basically to see if you have a criminal record. In the sections it asks you to tick your identity, you know those tick boxes that ask you where you, what your nationality is. I, t I wrote, instead of ticking, black, British, because I'm British born but I'm also black and I wanted to identify both areas. The form came back, <laughs> this is not a joke, this is true. And the form basically told me I either have to tick British, but under British you could only have white, um, or you have to tick black, and under that was African or Afro-Caribbean or something else. And it just made me think really, because that is, pos par um, that is possibly how other people view you as well. If you're a black person anywhere in the world, Sometimes you're viewed as, you know, you're either from the Caribbean or you're Jamaica. And, you know, your heritage is from another island because we all know that. But identity-wise, if I've lived in the UK my whole life, and I know there's probably... if I, When I go to Jamaica or I travel to Africa or to any country around the world, my culture is possibly, you know, I'll have things in common and similarities. But I people won't understand some things around British culture unless you live here, they won't know some words. I remember my um, Nigerian friends and I was giving him some phrases like cutting off your nose to spite your face, a bird in the hand is worth two in the... <laughs> I can't even remember it myself. These are British sayings that are said and he was like, what does that mean? You know, and there's just the same as culturally in Africa, there's things that I'm not going to get. You know, my dad was Ghanaian, but there's things that cultures and traditions that I don't understand. So I suppose what I'm trying to say there and with this story is you have to own who, who you are. Like I always say when people ask me about my heritage, I was born in the UK, my dad is Ghanaian and my mother's Jamaican and that's just how I describe it. I've got parts of all of that but I can't go out there in the world and pretend I'm Jamaican and be because I wasn't born there and the thing is I can connect with that country through my mother but there's lots of things which I wouldn't have a clue about. And it's disrespectful to other people as well. Because you can't just claim something. And people do this at World Cup. They do it in other situations. And then other times it's like, no, let's go that direction. And all people, I'm going to give you four tips really of how you can explore your identity in a safe way. But also how you can become more accepting of your culture. The first one is to reconnect with your culture and be proud of who you are. Over the last few months, people not only have come to me seeking counselling, but also in discussions that have been held on, online, justifying and trying to get people to understand where they're coming from, trying to get people to understand, you know, the pain of racism or discrimination or whatever it is. No one is going to feel 
they can have empathy towards your situation, but you, you, you're the only person who's going to understand what it's like to have gone through your experience. There are people as well who don't care about any of that, what you're saying. Their issue is, what are you telling me for? Why do I need to know? Stop going on about it. And the key for me, really, is to just be proud of who you are. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to ever try and educate someone about what it feels like to be me. If they ask a question, I'll answer. Apart from that, I don't, I don't care. This is just how I've always been anyway. That's how I've, I've, just, I've just been like that as a person. If I'm proud of who I am, and if my cultural identity is strong, as well as like I'm confident as being a black woman, I don't need to beg or to plead or to force or to ask anyone to accept me. You know, they either will or they won't. They'll either get on board and say, well, you know, I'm fine with, I recognise that these, there's parts of the um, world that struggle with discrimination. I won't be part of that, so I'm not going to be discriminatory towards someone, or they won't. But your identity is made up of how you feel and what you feel about yourself. Because the other part of that, and I'll probably make a separate video, is people who are dual heritage or mixed race. There's been lots of discussions online. Some guy that was on Facebook said, mixed race people need to pick a side, he said. And I was just thinking, huh? You can't tell someone who's got two sides of their culture and they're both important because that's what made them to pick a side. How can they pick a side? I said to, I said to him, pick a side, what do you mean? And then he said, well, they should choose to, uh, um, black because that's how society views them. I said, well, that's nothing to do with that person. And you can't ask someone to disregard half of who they are. So if their parents, is, uh, um, they've got a white mother, then they're supposed to say, well, you're, you know, I'm going to ignore you and I'm going to choose like this side because society sees me as a black person. Anyway, no, like complete nonsense argument. But the point is, if people feed into that as a biracial person or mixed race, then they're going to they're going to feel that's what they're being expected to do, and that's going to lead to more like identity issues for people. So, reconnect with your culture. Be proud of who you are. Gain knowledge. Um, knowledge is power, but also knowledge is important. I love hearing stories about you know how my mum grew up. I loved when I went to Jamaica, even though I've only been once. And I hope to go again. Just seeing the village that she grew up in, you know, just hearing the stories that she's constantly told us our lives, it's really important because it helps you then to fit, be, feel proud of who you are, that you can share them stories with other people. When I went to Ghana, I loved it. I loved being in Ghana, seeing where my dad grew up as well. Um, gain as much knowledge as you can, have conversations with other people, and it doesn't always have to just be people from your culture. Cultural identity, we learn from other people as well and their cultures. I like hearing about any person um, who has a strong identity and who is proud of that and who wants to teach and educate. You know, I'm interested in hearing about um, the different languages, Welsh language, for example, because, you know, when you see that there's, <laughs> there's I think there's a village that is the longest there's more letters in that village than in anywhere in the world or in the country anyway and it's just you can't pronounce it but they can the welsh people can things like that make you know are interesting to me so it's about being open i've already said this one don't justify or get angry or debate with everyone just accept that everyone sees things differently the amount of wasted energy trying to debate and discuss with someone and tell them they shouldn't do this or should do that is Pointless. People have free will. People have choices, and they can. It my my feeling and my philosophy on life is: I can choose whether you're in my life or not. I can choose whether you affect me or not. I don't care about any stranger's opinion of me. Um, I respect, for example, on this having YouTube channels. You love the feedback, and obviously they're strangers. People on Facebook, they're strangers. You know, but even if it's negative or positive, it's not going to like, I'm not going to go home and cry in my bed because someone on the street has shouted something out or because there's an article in the newspaper saying this about black women or whatever it is. It's just not, it's not even going to bother me. My family, I care what they think and my friends, but even there's times where even what my family and friends think doesn't bother me. You know, we have to get to that point where just be proud of who you are. This is not just about identity, this is just about you as a person. And the final thing is don't hide, be ashamed or dismiss any aspects of who you are. A lot of times with cultural identity, and this is people from any culture, Chinese, Asian, black, 
white. We try to blend in by doing things which are alien to us, and that could include skin bleaching, that could include changing our name from our cultural Chinese or African name, turning it into Anna or Susie. We have had this discussion with someone before. There was lots of people, Chinese people called Susie, and I was thinking, oh, does everyone in China get, is that like, because it's not a Chinese name, is it? But the point is, these people, um, or Anne, Anna was another one. And then when I spoke to someone like who I knew, she said, well, it's just easier to pronounce like in England. And same as with African names, lots of people I went to university with shortened their name or they changed it. And that just ruins the beauty of the name. You know, it's not your problem if someone can't pronounce it. You can show them how to pronounce. If they get it wrong, you can just keep, um, what's the word, correcting them. You don't need to hide who you are because your name represents your culture. So that's all I want to talk about this time around. I might do another video exploring this in more depth and talking about it from different angles. But as a counsellor, obviously my main thing and as a coach is that I, t I treat people on the basis of they're human beings. So I'm not someone that is ever going to judge someone or treat someone a certain way because society says we should or we should view all white people like this or we should view all Chinese people like this. That is, to me, ridiculous, but also that's not how I work as a person. Every interaction I have with someone, I'll judge it on my experience of that interaction. So I hope you found this video useful. Please feel free to like, to leave any comments that you might have, and to share. And I just want to say again, thank you to all my subscribers. I appreciate you for watching and for leaving comments. Take care, everyone. Bye.